a big panic mode if uh, if someone dishonors a deed poll because the next steps are going to be crucial into how you validate and authorize that lawful injury against your trust and uh, take the steps to uh, get the executors and administrators back on track. So uh, for the steps involved is um, after an allotted seven days has uh, expired is a second notice is sent uh, along with a bill. Now we are, uh, and again, is it, it's there's been a lot going on, so please bear with us as we roll out these steps. They will be available on the uh, on the site. Uh, there will be instructions uh, in regards to how to do filings for these, and essentially, is what you have is a injury, which is a grave ecclesiastical dishonor against the trust which is a $10 million um, charge. So, um, Terry, is there anything at this point you'd like to add while I uh, get a glass of water? Okay, well, uh, while Terry's getting around is... Uh, now, with each... Sorry about that, Brian. Uh, oh, that's okay. Did, did you need something? Sorry. Yeah, I just uh, I, I just wanted to see if you could just quickly take over for a sec while I get some water. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, let me just remind everyone real quick um, when we get to the question and answer uh, session, if you'll do a star eight on your phone and get placed into the question queue, I'll, I'll be able to unmute you in order, and you can ask your questions. And uh, so we'll try to keep it limited for um, uh, if you can combine maybe up to no more than two questions at a time, and then you can always go back in the queue so you can move on to other questions. And if there's time and uh, not too many uh, are queued up yet, uh, I'll let you know. So. Um, Thank you. Anyway, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And uh, Brian, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. All and, right, uh, you're welcome. Yeah, in the uh, in the rush to get on the because uh, uh, there was something up with Skype, I uh, I wasn't able to get water. So now I know how Frank goes when he uh, when he talks for an hour straight. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So is uh, in these steps is we now have a relationship that's going on with a valid uh, dishonor against a valid real property trust. So I, I'd just like to kind of clear up uh, some of the differences between using UCC in the past and then now using UCC as a valid means of notice of lawful enforcement. So one of those things was, in the past, um, there was a common misconception that was uh, floating around the internet that a lot of people caught on, and that was the, uh, the idea that you can just kind of take a, a Roman birth certificate and write an acceptance for value on it, and then send it off to the treasury thinking you're going to get some kind of bond. Well, uh, you see, the problem with sending off filings uh, such as uh, the cracking the code stuff that was all over the UCC uh, movements was that up until now, everybody has been approaching it from the wrong aspect of they're not coming at it from the aspect of real property title but instead they're coming at it from the missed angle that they're still only holders of equitable title. So in other words, is filings that were done a certain way were labeled as basically frivolous filings that could be then bundled 
and sold as multiple dishonors and monetized. And actually today, um, it, it's speculation on my behalf, but again, as I believe just through the research that I've been doing, that um, a large number of the record all-time bonuses uh, being paid out to bank executors are largely due to the increasing amounts of uh, dishonors of bundles of derivatives that have been uh, monetized. Now, um, again, is uh, writing ninety billion dollar bonds uh, and and trying to file them. Uh, again, all that really actually does is if you're not coming in as essentially a real holder of property, then it defaults in as holder as equitable. So again, as you you can start to see if you study the articles of UCC, and specifically uh, how Article Nine was rewrote, and uh, I would highly suggest um, going through the the I believe it's the Hornblower series manuals uh, on Article Nine, and they were actually uh, written by the gentleman who rewrote the Article Nine conventions. Uh, you'll start to see that um, that such uh, unqualified endorsements can easily be monetized uh, as sin in the system. So, what has an ecclesiastical deed poll have to do with real property? Well, I'd have to say everything because, you see, a trust was created for every man, woman, and child living and deceased that there is. And from that, you have the spiritual conveyance of the property of the divine immortal spirit that expresses into trust to the living flesh. So essentially, is you are now a trustee holding real property. And as such, as a holder, can now come with the lawful legal title of real property. So now under that is you can come forth as a trust in a consigner consignee relationship. So uh, when we see that the uh, the follow up steps to the ecclesiastical deed poll, uh, you'll start to see this relationship of trust roll out where you will be able to do a proper filing, a perfected UCC filing, uh, under the status of, uh, of trust instead of the creditor-debtor uh, position, uh, lawfully notifying of the grave ecclesiastical dishonor that has been done against the, uh, the deed post that you sent in. Now, Again, is uh, I, I, Frank can't stress enough. Everyone can't stress enough that uh, the 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 thought or the uh, thought pattern of trying to do this for some type of monetary gain is is an abomination. Uh, it doesn't work that way. It's uh, it's spiritual energy. The the ecclesiastical deed polls are done on the reverse of a Roman document that is sent to you, such as a summons or other type matter where uh, you are being extorted for some kind. Um, I have done one. Uh, I have done one for a, a grave uh, uh, injury that was uh, taken, done against my trust, uh, and I'm already going through the steps so just to let everybody know is that uh, this isn't something that uh, just that is being passed out and, and uh, experimented on out there in the public. Uh, I myself is currently involved in going through these steps. And as they unfold, is that they will be available for, for everybody. Uh, now, uh, let's quickly talk about... Um, some of the uh, issues 
that that we have with uh with, with them being returned so I, I again is unfortunately we all have to trade our slave mind in for liberated mind that we just are divine and one way of doing that is let go of the fear let go of the fear of of uh, will they accept it now let me tell you something about that if you're asking for acceptance we're already imprisoned in slave mind with the ego as the jailer government is government it's the control of the mind truly actually everywhere is just a collection of men and women gathered organized through belief through the concept of fiction being real uh, through the concept of laws being lawfully promulgated is we have the belief that societies run and have their own autonomous uh, thoughtful entity but however we see that uh, through the compartmentalization of how the uh, the, the current delinquent executors and administrators set up the system it was that very compartmentalization through the automation of the system that became its downfall into what we see as dying throws today as it slowly winds down uh, over the next few months uh, to demise now what's fascinating is that compartmentalization made the automation of the system almost uh, as God so uh, I'll give you a quick example of that would be when we take for example the stock market uh, a, a lot of people don't understand how it operates but it's been set up with an artificial heartbeat that basically emulates the seasons and the uh, the the planetary heartbeat uh, through a system called the Fibonacci series and traders will use tools to gauge the stock market based on its artificial heartbeat uh, with a, a program called Fibonacci tools so the entire whole system has been set up to be the artificial beast the bull the bull Moloch of or it's why you see a bull statue at the corner of every financial district in the world because it truly is a bull market of or brought in again with the uh, formation fully of the resurrection of the kingdom of the blood and uh, with the signing in the 1935 Rorick pact by Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, under the uh, the watchful all-seeing supervision of Nicholas Rourke uh, so I'm a little bit off topic but it's all related because um, you see that the way that that system was set up as a loose association of cartels they had to set in place a system so that one thief could have restitution against another thief and what they had to decide on which took over 200 years to do was a system of treaties and exchanges and they're known as international treaty law and also the international bills of exchange now they had to bring in a codified system uh, or else Africa could not do business with uh, China China couldn't do business with the states the states couldn't do business with Iceland so uh, that unified centralized code based off of a hodgepodge 
of not only Talmudic, but also uh, 